Hello, hello, Blender enthusiasts. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make some thick fur. So some animal fur in this case. And this is going to be done with five systems. So what you're looking at right now is the, the result from today's tutorial. This is what we're going to be making. So we got the base fur, we got some longer random fur. We've got the top hair fur, of course, it needs to be beautiful. And we've got that random light hair that always keeps sticking out, even if you comb it a hundred times. So this is what we're going to be making. I hope you're going to enjoy it and let's get into Blender. Right, let's get into it. I'm going to start off, of course, we always do this. I'm sorry, but we're going to be deleting this cube, the default cube. <laughs> we don't need that. So just press delete and off it goes. All right, let's replace that. Shift A and let's just add um, Suzanne, right? So rotate this, RZ90, and we got it nice and facing the front. So now that I press numpad 3, it will be in the camera view. Beautiful. All right, so this time I'm going to start off by actually setting up my scene. And I feel like that's important when you add hair and hair materials later on. Um, because the look of your hair will largely depend on your scene. So what lighting it hits and what HDRI you got set up, the shadows, the amount of light. So in my opinion, it is important to set that up before adding the hair system. So we can tweak that hair system according to the, the environment that we're going to be building as well. Okay, so Suzanne is quite blocky. Let's add a subdivision modifier real quick. There we go. And let's just set that on two and shade that smooth as well. You won't really be seeing Suzanne at the end, so don't really worry about it too much. Um, but this is fine for now. So let's start this off. Let's go to camera view, numpad zero, and I'm going to select it and press shift F to just move it around. I'm going to move closer to Suzanne. So we are right about at the front and I'm going to move this down a little bit as well. And I'm going to make sure that my location on the Y axis is zero. So it is facing exactly front and I'm going to make my Z rotation 90. So that's completely straight as well. And then I can just move it around a little bit and rotate it around to Y maybe. Something like this is looking pretty all right. Nice. Remember to save your scene every once in a while, Control S. And let's just get started with it. So select your Suzanne. And before we're gonna do that, we're gonna press Shift A and just add a quick plane. This will be our ground and background as well. And press GZ, move that down and scale it up with S, of course. And just move that so it covers your camera largely, something like this. And press S, Y. And I'm gonna go to edit mode. And I'm going to go select this back edge. I just extrude that upwards. We're going to select this edge, bevel it. So we got a nice smooth shape and that just shaded smooth as well. And I'm doing this so that if we go into render mode, we have a nice smooth background, right? It's just a trick they use for product photography and stuff like that as well. So you get this nice smooth background and the smoother you make that curve, the less hard transition you will have in shadows and stuff. So, I'm going to set my render to cycles right away and GPU as well. And I'm going to set up an HDRI. And I've got a specific one in mind for this one. So I'm going to go to color and change this to environment texture. And I'm going to open up something in my download folder. And it's called Klutzle. Perfect pronunciation. It's uh, this one. Um, something for close-up far, I like it when there's like a little bit of a soft shading. So this sky is nice and soft. There are lots of clouds, so the shadow is very soft as well. And that means that there's just a lot more to see in the fur, right? There's no hard contrast and stuff like that. You can actually see the strands and see how the fur looks in, a, in, in like a real cloudy environment. And that's something I like. So this looks fine. And I'm going to delete that default light right there. And to make things faster, I'm just going to set the settings of my environment texture to manual. And that will do. And that means that if I now will rotate this around my scene, let's do that real quick. Let's set up another tab and set this to shader. And let's go to world. And I'm going to select my Kultzelba HDRI. And I'm going to press Ctrl T to set up this mapping nodes. And if you don't have that set up, you can go to edit preferences. And then just head to your add-ons and search for the node wrangler. So node wrangler and just 
check that box and save your preferences, close it. And now you'll be able to do this. So select it and press Ctrl T and you will get this set up. And now we can just rotate our HGRI around the Z axis, right? So I'm going to set this at around, hmm, let's see, 280. Yeah, something like that. So we get um, very soft shadows and it's pretty much lit up from the front. I want a lot of detail in this fur. Maybe we can change this out later. It doesn't really matter for now. Close this tab for now. And let's draw a box, Ctrl B, around our render region. So we only see that point. Beautiful. So we've got our scene set up quite nicely already. So what I'm going to do next is just go to solid view and we're going to get started on the fun part. So how do we add hairs and particle systems? Well, if you're doing something like this, it is usually good to have like a reference image or an idea in mind. My idea is um, that I want to create some like, something like um, one of those uh, alpacas with thick fur or buffles with thick fur as well. So I'm trying to look um at images of like these animals and i have done it already but you can just look for it so if we go to google and research for let's say thick fur maybe that's already a nice nice one um so yeah we can see that's nice and entangled and it's nice and i'm not sure what you call it rough perhaps and stuff like this there's strands so we're gonna keep that in mind so this one looks very nice <laughs> Um, so this is pretty much what I had in mind when I started this tutorial. And right off the bat, you can see that there are some different particles, right? At the face, at the head, the rest of the body as well. There are hair sticking out. And it's, it's hard to do that all in the same particle system. So we're going to need multiple ones. So I'm just going to start with the basics. And let's go to particle systems. And let's just hit that plus. And we need hair, not an image here. And this is where the settings start, right? So we need to tweak this into something that we actually want. Okay, so right off, I'm going to set this hair length a lot smaller. Let's just try 0.06 perhaps. I want it to be very short. So this is going to be the base fur, right? So when I'm working with fur or hair, I try to pull it up from the ground. So from the, let's say the, the skin. So what is closest to the skin? Um, and, and what is the foundation of the fur? This time it's going to be like the, the thick fur that covers the skin, gives the animal some some heat protection and stuff like that, or cold protection, one of those. <laughs> and, and now we can just tweak those settings. So we need a little bit more. It doesn't cover quite all of the parts of Suzanne. So I'm going to try 3000, and that looks fine. Um, and we're going to play around with the strand steps as well. So if we go to the render settings and the viewport, let's open those up together. The, the basic steps are set on three and two for the viewport. I'm just going to set them to four, uh, both of them. And that's something I like to do with hair. I like to see in my viewport what, it gonna, what it's going to look like in the render as well. And then after each particle system, I can always just um, this decrease this setting right here in the, in the viewport display. So it, it's a little bit less of an harassment to the, um, to the system. So it's a little bit faster. But for now, I'm just going to leave those both at four. Right. Next up, we've got some children settings, right? So this is not nearly enough hair for um, for fur. We need a lot more. And I'm going to set this at interpolated pretty much all the time, unless um, I need something more specific. But interpolated usually works very nicely. So it tries to add some new hairs in between of the, the parent hairs that you've got here already. And I'm going to set the display around to 30. Um, 30, not zero, 30, and the render amount as well. Um, and we're going to de decrease the display amount later probably. But for now, I want to see how much it is and how it looks. And I think that's fine. You can still see through the hairs, but that's all going to change in the next few settings. So we're going to go to clumping first. Um, because clumping is a setting that you're going to be using a lot when you work with hair. Because clumping is basically what happens when you have multiple hairs and they stick together at those end points, right? So what I just showed you in those images as well, let me see if I can quickly find one. This one has it already. You can see like these clusters of hair, right? And they pretty much stick together and go from multiple hairs and they go out into a point pretty much, right? So that's what clumping basically means. And you can see when I increase that clumping, 
you can see that it's going to try to form these trends. Of course, we've got very short hair right now, so it's going to look quite odd. Um, but we do want some clumping in this, especially because we're also going to add some roughness and some curves later, some curls. So I'm going to set this at like a decent value of 0.4. Uh, and the shape you can set at zero for now. So shape basically means um, at what point it starts to clump. If you swipe this up, it will clump later. So at more of the tip of those hairs. I'm just gonna leave that for now. And you can also go minus, by the way. So it's gonna try to move those starting points closer together. All right, now we want some roughness because animal fur is very rough, especially the animals that I just showed you. So we want some kind of roughness. And I'm not gonna add any uniform roughness for this one. Uh, but I am going to add some random roughness. So I'm going to set this uh, maybe 0.1. Yeah, 0.1 looks decent. Maybe a little bit less. You can play around with this and see what you like yourself. And for the size, I usually leave this at around 1. Um, at least if it works. If it, if it looks too tangled and too um, chaotic, you can always increase that size um, and it will help out a lot. But I think for basic fur, this is nice, and it will cover some more of that default surface of the of Suzanne as well. So that's beautiful. And we are, of course, going to add some kind of curl as well. And that's being done under the kink setting. So set that kink to curl. And right away, you can see what happens. You've got some beautiful curves going around Suzanne. So that's obviously way too much, right? So we want this to be way less, so the amplitude is way too large. So I'm going to set this at like 0.012. And the reason I'm just putting in these random values is because I already tried it out before. I've worked with hair systems a lot of times. Um, so I can guess it pretty much. And of course, I've already tried this out. So you can see how quickly the amplitude changes the look of your hairs. Um, so I'm just going to leave that at what I had just now. So 0.012. It looks quite nice. And yeah. Something like that. And then we have another clumping setting. And that basically means how much your hair, so your curl is going to clump. So if I decrease this, you can see that they're going to try to spread out a little bit more. I usually leave this at one. We're going to play around with that later in some other particle systems. Um, and then we've got the frequency, of course, as well. So how much of these curls will happen. So if you have the set at two by default, this it's, it's, it pretty much means that it's going to try to add two curls, I guess. And if you set this at four, you can see that it's going to try to to add more curls. And if you set it at one, it's only going to curl, let's say, one time. So the frequency basically means how, um, how many curls there will be in each hair. So the higher you set this, the more curls it will try to add in each trend. All right, so I'm going to set this at a little bit higher, actually. I want this to be nice and wild. Let's see if we can get away with something like four. Yeah, that's nice. And the other reason why I'm setting this high is because I wanted to cover more of Suzanne's surface without actually having to add that much more hairs. So if you curl it around nicely, you can see that it already covers way more area than it would if it only sticks out straight. So something like this is perfect for a foundation of Suzanne. Right, next up. Or let's see if we have to play around. I'm going to add this a little bit more, actually, 4.4. Beautiful. And let's see the shape. Um, if we have to change that, we can. If we change the shape, it basically means where the curling starts in a hair. And at zero, it starts right at the base of the hair. And if you up this, it's going to curl more and more towards the end of the hair only. So it means that the starting points of each of these hair strands will remain straight. Um, well, the end points will curl. And the higher you set this, the more it will try to stick straight at the start. So that's what that does. I'm going to set this at about 0.5. So it starts curling at around half point. Beautiful hair shape. Very important for rendering. And you won't be able to see this in the viewport. So it's important to go to rendering view every once in a while. And you can see that these hairs are very thick. They look like spaghetti more. Um, so I'm going to set this the uh, diameter to, let's say, 0.3 and tip 0.1. And that's basically the default value that I use. I use 0.2 and 0.05 a lot. Uh, but if I want thicker fur, I usually go for 0.3, 0.1 or even 0.5, 0.2, um, something like that. So play around with that. 
And this already looks quite nice, actually. Um, so this particle system, we're not going to change any of the hair shapes. We're not going to comb it. We're not going to go into particle edits. Um, this is our foundation layer. And this is perfect. Right, so let's just quickly add a material so we can see how that looks right away. I like that. So I'm going to add a new material. Let's see. Let's just call this, give this a name right away because I usually forget that. I'm going to call this base fur. We don't need a principled BSDF. We're going to add a principled hair BSDF. Beautiful. And I'm going to swipe that into the surface. And right away, it changes more to like a hair look. It will get a little bit more hard on your computer as well because usually you have some kind of transparency and index of refraction as well. So it's a little bit harder. Um, but you can see how it already looks more like hair. And I'm going to change these settings, of course, um, because I want some other coloring. And I'm going to set this to melanin concentration. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically how our, our hair is made up as well. So the lighter your hair is, the more melanin you pretty much have. Or sorry, the, 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 the lower your melanin is, the lighter the hair. So you lose melanin once you get older. Um, if people with black hair have a lot of melanin, and uh, it pretty much changes like that. So if you're blonde, you have less melanin and you have melanin redness as well. So I can decrease this and it basically gets blonde, brown, um, reddish brown. And I want some kind of, um, I want some kind of reddish fur because the animals we just looked at, they were quite, quite reddish, right? They had a reddish tint to them. And I like the way that looks a lot. So we're going to add some melanin redness and I think this looks beautiful. And for the melanin itself, we want some color variation in the hair. So we want some darker and some lighter spots. So I'm going to swipe this to the left. And I'm just going to add a color ramp. Ramp, color ramp, there it is. And then I'm going to select this one and I'm going to add a noise texture. Uh, where is it? Noise texture, this one. There we go. And I'm going to... Control shift click on my color ramp and I'm just going to take a look at how these colors look, right? So I want some large, large parts of darker and large part of, of lighter hair. So I think um, this size of the material is already quite all right. I'm just going to play around with the setting real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, something like this looks nice. So it, is, it isn't too much of variation, but there is some variation. And this is, of course, very hard. So we go from completely black to white. Um, but what happens if you go to your principal PSF is that now um, those white values are uh, pretty much one, which means it's black hair. And those black values are pretty much zero, which is going to be very light hair. Right, so this is going to range all the way from white up to black hair right now, which is not what we want. So we're going to select this left point and we're first going to swipe it to like a place where we are satisfied with it. Um, and I'm going to guess that it's somewhere around around here. And this right point, let's see what happens when we swipe this left a little bit. Um, yeah, that's looking, looking quite, quite nice. Mm, but not too harsh. Maybe even... Yeah, maybe something like this. Right, so now we're going to select that black one, click on the black color, and we're just going to play around with that value. Right, we want it to be way less, way less white. We don't want any, any kind of white hair. We only want light brown. So we have to swipe this up a little bit. Um, so how about something like this? Right, so the lightest color is now light brown. Looks fine. Now I'm going to select this right one. And we're going to swipe this up a little bit because we also don't want complete black. So I'm going to set this at around, hmm, a little bit lighter at least. Something like that. I don't want it to be, be darker than the left one. So let's just increase this left one a little bit. Just like so, and this right one can be a little bit lighter. Okay, so now we've got some variation in the color of the hair. So we've got some darker spots and some lighter spots, but it doesn't look like it's that hard of a transition. So I like that a lot. That's looking great. Okay, so we've got that hair set up pretty much nicely now, and we're going to be using this hair for the next system as well. So, 
or maybe we aren't, we'll see. Maybe we'll add a new one. Let's go to solid view and let's go to particle systems. I just rename this first one to base per beautiful. Right, so we can disable that for now and hit the plus sign. And our next one is going to be the longer fur. So it's still going to be a part of the base fur, but it's going to be a little bit longer. So we want some of these longer strands in the hair as well. All right, so for this, I'm going to set this to hair once again. And we don't need quite as much. We're going to set this to like half of what we had previously. And what we can do actually is set this to the first particle settings and then just hit this little new particle system settings button which basically means that it will copy it from the previous one. Beautiful. So now we're just going to decrease the number and we're going to increase the length, obviously, because we want some longer hair. Okay, so let's set this hair length to like 0.1, so it sticks out a little bit more. Um, and for the steps, I think we can still get away at around um, 4 will probably still do. And then let's go to the children. The children settings are still all right. 30, 30 will do fine because we still have to fill up some of that skin. So we still need a lot of hair and we want some clumping going on now as well. So a little bit more actually because those hairs are a little bit longer as well. So I want them to stick together a little bit better. Right, so they actually become strands. Beautiful. So set this at one and we can play around with the shape. Um, I want this to be visible that they are going together at those endpoints. So I'm not going to set that that's too high. Something like that. Beautiful. And now we're going to go to the roughness settings. Um, I think this is already looking quite nice. So we can even leave this as it is right now. Um, and let's go to that curling settings instead. So this amplitude, we now got some longer hair. Um, so we can increase that. Actually, I'm going to reverse this amplitude. So I'm going to go into the minus. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it will just start the curl in the other direction. And that just gives it a little bit more variation in the hair together with the previous system. Right? So something like this is looking beautiful. And let's see if we want to change any of these other settings. I think the frequency is still fine. Um, but I'm going to add some flatness, actually. And what that does is just bring those trends closer together, as you can see. So 0.5, around 0.5. And it basically means that each of these... Um, children particles will now move more together into that curly shape and I think that looks beautiful so I actually want these strands to stick out nicely as they do right now okay so that's looking nice and I'm just gonna take a take a look at this this hair shape now if I go to rendered view you can see it already takes the the material of the previous hair system as well and I want this to be a little thicker, actually. So it's become some very thick hair that sticks out. So perhaps point, point 0.5 and point 0.2. So I already mentioned that before. We can have some nice of these sticky hairs going out. And that looks nice. And let's see the combination with the previous system as well. So we've got some nice base fur hair. Some very thick hair. Beautiful. All right. But what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to add a new material for that second system so i'm gonna hit that plus setting new material and this is gonna be the longer fur material and i'm gonna go to my base fur pretty much copy the entire thing um yeah those three notes copy them and paste them in the longer fur so just paste them and just connect that principal bsdf with the surface beautiful all right, so why am I duplicating this? Well, I want to change some of that roughness values and the melanin as well. Um, just so we get some more variation in hair strands and stuff like that. So the longer hair perhaps get more dirty because they, they get caught in more stuff. So I'm going to decrease this melanin redness a little bit so it isn't quite as red. And I'm going to make it way more rough. So let's see how rough. 0.6 maybe. So it isn't too much, but it is quite rough for both of those values. Um, so that just has a little bit less reflection. It looks a little bit more dirty as well. Um, and we can even make it more dark if we want. So just increase this value. Or swipe it a little bit more to the left. Doesn't really look to change that much. Um, it actually does make it look quite much, quite a lot darker in these parts. So make sure that isn't going to be too dark. You can always swipe this down a little bit again. Like so. Maybe even more. Ah, 
All right, so what we're missing, why we don't really see those changes, is because we have to go to the particle systems first and change the material to the aquifer. Right, so now we can see those changes, right? Now we can see what happens. And this needs to be a little bit less dark because we want this to be a bit darker. And the right one can be a little bit lighter. So now we actually get some nice dark values. Beautiful. All right, so let's see how this looks together with the other particle system. There we go. So we got base fur um, and longer fur now. And together they already look like a nice foundation of fur. Amazing. And right now it also reflects some of that white values at the bottom. So we're going to change the background color later as well. All right, so let's just get into the next particle system. All right, because we've got the base fur and you can see Suzanne already takes the material of the, um, of the hairs as well. That's why it looks so weird. But it doesn't matter because it's going to be covered in hair anyway. So I'm not going to actually bother with the skin material for now. All right, so let's add another particle system. And this next one is going to be the random thick strands. Random thick strands. So what I'm going to do, um, first things first, go to solid view. And I want some of these thicker strands to appear at around the head, the ears, the eyebrows, um, and the chin as well. And this is why I want to do it. So if you look at animals, let's go back to our reference. Um, and let's go to hmm, let's go to this bison maybe. There are always some kind of strands sticking out um, and here as well. So thicker strands that are just sticking out um, randomly. For example, this one, it looks like it just got out of bed. There are some thick strands, right? They're just sticking out. Longer strands, they get entangled with each other. They get dirty, they get wet, they stick together. And they just look pointy like that. So that's also what I'm going to add, of course. I'm going to try to follow some references. And I want them to be on the head. Just right there. And of course, we subdivided our Suzanne, but we didn't apply the subdivision. So the weight painting is being done on the base model, which means we don't have a lot of room to play around. But that's totally fine. I want some to be on the airs right there. The other side as well, of course. We're going to to two sides of a, of a head. And I want some to be on those eyebrows as well, right there. And this one as well. And I want some to be on the chin, right there, there, and a little bit at the back maybe, so they point out. And maybe the sides a little bit even. Right about that. And we can even include some of that middle part and blur that out a little bit, beautiful. Okay, so. This is going to be our vertex group that we call something like top head. No, 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 this is not going to be top head only. It's going to be the, 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 the random thick strands. <laughs> I messed that up, but that's fine. Let's go to the hair systems. And this third one is going to be hair as well. And let's go scroll down all the way to field weights. No, to vertex groups is what I mean. And let's select density and select that weight paint we just made. So those hairs will only stick out of that selection that we just weight painted. Okay, so let's decrease this length right away to about, they're gonna be longer, so about maybe, yeah, maybe this 0.43 looks fine. And we want a lot less hairs, right? So this is not gonna stick out that frequently, only here and there. So we're gonna decrease this number all the way until I think we've got something beautiful. Maybe something like that. And we can even tra ch change the seed number. So we get another random value. For example, if we want a little bit more on the hair, or sorry, on the ears, instead of only on the head. Something like this. This is this is a nice one. Um, so actually, I'm going to scroll. Yeah, I like this one. So we got a few ones on the beard as well. So that's beautiful. And because we've got some longer hairs, we want some more segments on that hair as well, right? So I'm going to change those steps to five and this one as well to five. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we have longer hair and we want it to curl and stuff as well. So we need some more, some more geometry in our hair strands to actually curl around. So if we only had two parts in here, for example, um, it will only be able to bend and not really make that smooth shape. So that's why I'm setting this at a little bit higher. So at five, 
All right, so we also want some children here. And instead of actually doing 30 this time, I'm going to set this a little bit lower. So maybe a lower 20. Um, and they're going to be intertwined later on anyway. So 20 and 20 and clumping will be completely set to one because we want these strands to be sticked together, stuck together, dirty and entangled, right? So we're going to clump it all the way. And what we can do is actually change the shape to a minus value. And I explained to you already what happens if you do that. So the base of those hairs will now move closer together if we do that. Something like that. And right now they look like spikes. That's totally fine because we're going to be adding some roughness values and stuff like that as well. So this is nice. And let's go to that roughness. Uniform is going to be untouched, but the random is going to be set at a high value. So let's see somewhere like that. And we're just going to change that size now to be a lot, lot less. So we get some very, very random kind of motions as those hairs, right? So you see them bending and being broken a little bit. Um, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. And we're, of course, we're going to add curls. Of course, there's going to be a beautiful fur. So we want some curly hairs in there as well. Right, the amplitude, let's set that to a lot less. It's too strong in my opinion, something like that. And let's see, we want some flatness in here as well. And that will just move them even closer together. So let's set that flatness at around around there, 0.6, we have some very nice trends. And let's set the frequency a little bit higher. So around three, maybe. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so that is nice, uh, but it still only sticks out. So I'm gonna be combing this hair, actually. So I'm gonna go to Particle Edit and select that comb brush, increase the size, and I'm just gonna comb it to like match a little bit of the head shape. Uh, so match a little bit of how that hair will bend around the hair and fall down. Of course, we've got graffiti going on, so this hair will fall down a little bit to the sides, perhaps. And the air ones as well, stick out, fall down. This one will fall down a little bit as well. We got the graffiti, we gotta wonder about the physics, of course. This one will fall down, and I'm gonna add some randomness as well. So this one may be able to go up a little bit. This one as well, so we got some random variation in that hair. Just like so. And remember to look at it from the side as well. Um, so it doesn't become like a straight um, a straight down only hairs at the sides. And comb this a little bit over. Comb this a little bit to the front perhaps. And that looks fine. Let's go back to object view. And let's see how this looks. That looks nice. Um, but I do think I want some more curliness in there. So I'm going to go to my curl. I'm going to increase this amplitude a little bit perhaps. Yeah, about there. And let's see if we want that frequency to change as well. And yeah, something like this is fine. And I think we have too many, too many hairs. So I'm just gonna go and change that children to about 10 or 15 maybe. I think that looks fine. Let's see how it looks together with our other hair systems, of course. Um, but first, I'm going to set this fur of the third system, so of these long hairs, I'm going to set that at the longer fur material. There we go. So let's see how it looks all together. And let's go to rendered view. There we go. So we got some random strands of hair sticking out. And I think they are too thick. So we're going to change that shape of the hair. So we'd still set at 1 meters. So I'm going to set this at around 0 0.2, 0 0.05. Right, so there are some sticky strands, some strands sticking out, but it is not too crazy, right? What we can do if we think there are too many sticking out, for example, at the top or those bottoms ones are too long, we can go to sculpt mode, or sorry, to uh, particle edit, and let's hide those first two, um, first two particle systems, and we can now just go to that length and set us to shrink, and then we can just shrink down some of those. Right, so I think these ones are a little bit too long and we need some more variation in that length. So we can just decrease some of these, this one as well, the ears, this one looks a little bit weird. So just play around with it, right? Hair is very organic. So just make it into whatever you feel like should it should look like. So let's go find out how it looks. I think that's perfect. Right, so we got some random strands sticking out. Beautiful. I'm gonna hide all of my systems and add a third one. And we're gonna call this one 
let's say random strats. Beautiful. Hit that plus sign. It's going to be a fourth one. And we have five in total. So we're almost there. And we're going to rename this fourth one to long top hair. And we're going to go to the object data properties. And we're going to make a new vertex group. And this is going to be called top hair. Right? So we still want it to look like there's some kind of hair on top, right? So it's not only short fur, but actually some long hair on the tops as well. So I'm select selecting Suzanne and I'm going to weight paint and I'm going to go to the brush and just going to draw the top of Suzanne's head a little bit. So this is where I want some actually long hair to appear on the sides a little bit as well, on the back of the head a little bit as well. Even though we're not going to be seeing that, we're still going to draw it, of course. In case you want to make an animation or something like that later or a 360 render something like this beautiful right so go back to object mode and let's just right away add that to the density so um, top hair and let's set this to hair and you see the hair only appearing from the top now right so we're gonna set this length to a little bit less so maybe 0.3 and it may not look that long right now, but it's going to look a little bit longer when we add like the curls and the roughness and stuff. So I'm going to set this number to about 2000. So I want a lot of hair here, something like that. And the segments are going to be way longer. I'm going to set these steps to eight and the strand steps in the viewport to eight as well, because this is going to be longer hair. Um, it needs just a little bit more detail to make it look nice, right? So eight will do the trick. And I want some children, of course. Um, and we're gonna go to the interpolated setting and just set it at 10, about 10. That's looking nice. And I'm going to go to the clumping setting and I don't want it too much right now because I want it to look a little bit chaotic anyway. So I'm gonna set this up like 0.15, but the shape will be all the way up to one. So the shape of the clumping will only happen at around the top or maybe like 0.85, at least later in the strand step okay so that's looking beautiful and uh, let's now try our way and make it around the roughness settings okay so we are actually going to use some uniform roughness now and the reason why is just because it's gonna make it look a little bit um a little bit more random because it's longer we can get away with a little bit more so i'm gonna set it like one like one four and i'm gonna set the size at around Let's see what actually looks decent. Maybe a little bit less. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Mm. Let's see. Actually, nah, let's leave this at 2. Um, two that's too big. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.7? Yeah, that's about right. You can see me playing around with these settings and that's what our hair particle systems are anyway. And we're going to add some randomness, of course, but that's going to be a little bit smaller. So like 0 0.06 and the size is going to be a little bit less as well. So 0 0.5 maybe. Yeah, it's looking nice, um, but we don't really have any type of clumpness yet. Um, so we may add that in the curl settings of the kink. So set this to curl. 0 0.2 is way too much. It is like 0 0.04. And we're going to increase this clumpness value. It is already at 1, so that's good. Um, and we're going to add some flatness. 0.5, just so they stick together a little bit more. You can see it happening right here as well. You can see how these trends try to stick together a bit more now. As like they're actually clumping together, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, frequency 2 is fine. And shape, I'm going to set this a little bit higher. So it only curls at those endpoints, actually. Hmm, maybe... Maybe not even. Let's just set this at like 0.2. And let's go to the particle edit. And let's just give him some nice hair now. Because we're going to be combing this for beauty, of course. So I'm just going to select that comb tool and just sculpt away. Um, like you would actually comb regular hair as well. And I still want this to be like animal. So I'm going to add some random variation to it. Some curls. Some curls up, some curls down. Just like that on the top part as well. Some randomness. 
and side view very important to do that as well i'm going to swipe this all the way down gravity remember physics and make it nice and random beautiful other side looking great and let's see if we want this to come down a little bit more um this can go up a little bit and this can actually go down a bit more and i think i want some more length in those side parts so i'm going to go to that length setting set this to grow and i'm just going to grow this side out a little bit this side out a little bit this top out a little bit as well um and then i'm just going to go back to my comb and just make it look beautiful as if we're actually making some random hair <laughs> let's go back to object view and see what it looks like all right that's looking great already um i'm not sure how this is going to match up with the rest of our particle system so let's just enable or actually let's change that shape first so let's go to the hair shape and set this to a 0.35 and 0.1 so it isn't too thick and i want some new material for this one as well so let's go to the material settings add a new one and hit new and i hope we still have it under a control c just paste it yeah there it is we still have that hair system so connect that and i'm going to be changing some of these values and i want some um let's see i want pretty much the same values at this longer fur i'm going to call this longest fur by the way the longest fur I want this to be very red, that's already beautiful. And I want this to be very rough as well, so it doesn't reflect that much light. And set the radial roughness all the way up, perhaps. So that is nice. Let's go to the particle settings and enable everything. This may be a little bit hard on your computer. If it's too hard, please decrease some of these um, viewport settings. Um, let's see what it looks like. That's already looking nice. All right, I think these top strands, they're a little bit too um, too wild. <laughs> so I'm gonna go select my Suzanne and hide everything but the last one in the viewport. And I'm gonna go to particle edit, oh, wrong one, particle edit. And I'm going to decrease the size a little bit in these side parts because they just fall over a little bit too much in my opinion. So decrease this and the top part as well was a little bit too chaotic, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, that's way better already. And we can go ahead and see if we want to tweak any of these settings still. Um, I think the curl is quite all right. Mm, maybe the roughness value is a little bit. So the size, I'm going to set this a bit larger, so like two. So it's all coming together a bit more. And I think that's nice, right? So I'm going to hide this and enable the base fur. I'm going to hit plus. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm now going to add the random hairs, right? So the single hairs that are just standing out, the hairs that are never working with you. Like if you comb your hair, there's always this one, this one hair that's just sticking out and it will never come down. And <laughs> that's probably for animals as well. And they have, don't have a comb, so they will have it even more. They have some random hairs just sticking out. So this is going to be our random hair. Random. And this is going to be hair, of course. And the number of this is going to be way less. Maybe even less. I don't know. Let's just keep that at like default that I had in mind already. And let's set this hair length to less. But it still has to stick out a little bit. You, you still have to see it. So about 0.3. Yeah, that's nice. And let's set this segment a little bit more because I want this to be curly, nice and curly. Um, so go to the render and set the steps to six and do the same for the viewport. I want to see what I'm doing. Um, remember to control save, control S. And I want some children. And the reason why I don't just leave this at like a single strand is because you lose all of these roughness settings and kink. So the curl settings when you have no children. So if I set this at interpolated, we suddenly have these clumping settings, we have the roughness settings, and we have a kink setting as well. So we need it enabled in order to get these settings. And I can set it to one, that will work. But if I set this to zero, it will once again, not really take these clumping values and roughness values into account because it just gets applied to the children together with the parents. So we need to have at least one. 
Okay, so let's set this up now. And I'm going to set the clumping all the way at one. So these all these two hairs are going to be sticking together. And uh, the shape, let's see. Again, actually, let's, let's use simple this time. Simple and set this at one. Okay. And we can leave the length at one. We can have the C at zero and the size at one as well. Um, and the radius, the radius is fine as well, right? So we're just going to leave all of this at the default settings. And let's go to the roughness. Um, and I'm going to add some random value, so like 0.1. And the size at one is fine. So you can see those hairs sticking out are curling already a little bit. And we're even going to add some curl, of course. And set this amplitude way less so that it only curls a little bit. Um, something like that. And I wanted to clump, but not as much as it does right now. I still want them to to be nice and free to, to move however they want. Right? So I'm going to set this at like 0.3. Yeah. And I'm going to increase the flatness so these hairs stick together a little bit as well. Um, let's see. Something like that, actually. 0.5. Yeah, 0.5 is better. And the frequency... A little bit higher maybe yeah so it curls nicely and the shape it can be a little bit higher so it curls only at those end points we're not going to see those those starting points anyway right because they're going to be covered in the longer fur so i'm going to set the shape at around 0.8 so it just curls a bit nicer at those edge points that's beautiful and we can cope this after we set the hair shape very important so it's not one meter we're going to set this at 0.3 and I want it to be a little bit more thin than the previous. So I'm going to set this at 0 0.07 because it has to look like it are like these thin hairs that are just doing their their own thing. They're just doing their own will. So I'm going to leave it to be nice and thin, right? So we are also going to create a new material for that one. So I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to call this random hair. Beautiful. And I'm going to go into that material, control V. Paste that in. Actually, we don't need this. We don't need it. Delete everything. Shift A. Principal hair. And connect it. And I'm just going to leave this at direct coralling right now. Because I want a specific type of a look for that hair. And this is not it. I want it to be lighter. Because um, usually when these hair stick out, light comes through a little bit. And they look very bright. So I'm going to just do that manually. Increase this color a little bit. Like make it a little bit more orange maybe and we have to of course apply that to our hair particles uh, let's let's find the render there it is and set this to random hair and you can see already that these are nice and light now so you can actually see them in the overlay as well so i'm gonna play around with the roughness i want this to be quite rough right the roughness um maybe a little bit less so they're nice and visible yes you can see right now all right, so I think we don't have to play around with that too much. Um, maybe we want a little bit of a different color, actually. Um, so let's make this a little bit more reddish. So like point, point 0.3, point 0.03. And I think that's already fine. Maybe a little bit lighter even. Like so. All right, so you can see those hairs nicely. And let's just include all the systems that we had so far. There we go, random hairs, random thick strands, and the long top hair now as well. There we go. So that's looking already quite beautiful, if you ask me. Okay, so the reason why we still have like this white color everywhere um, is because this background is quite white. <laughs> Usually you will take the environment to have reflections, but I just, I'm just gonna set a default material. And I think that I want something brownish, reddish, because the hair is that color as well, and that usually works together quite nicely. So I'm going to make this nice and reddish, nice and orangish. That is probably a word. Something like something like that. And then I'm just gonna increase the roughness all the way to one, just like that. And is there something else that I want to do? Not really, actually. I think this material is looking quite all right as it is. Maybe a little bit less saturated, so it doesn't um, take that much attention away from the actual actual Suzanne. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, select my Suzanne, and I'm going to make one final tweak. This random hair is a little bit too thick, in my opinion. So I'm going to select this 
be 0 0.2 and 0 0.05 maybe. Just so it isn't that visible, but it is still visible. Right, I think that's looking quite nice as fur. Yeah, it matches very nicely. Um, it, it even covers the top nicely. It comes together nicely, so it isn't like it looks like the top is completely separate from the rest, because it is, of course, a different particle system, but it combines really nicely all together. Right, so the final tweak that I'm going to try is just to play around with my world setting. So I'm going to increase the strength. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm going to set this to like 1.2. And I'm going to rotate it around a little bit more. So it is, um, so the, the front of it gets a little bit more light, catches a little bit more light as well. I think that's looking fine. So we can see those nice details, those nice smaller strands, thicker strands on the top. And of course, those random hairs, those hairs that never listen. And if you think they are too light, you can always just change that material. So this final material, the random hair, you can always make it a little bit darker if you think it's too present. Right, so chibi, that's how you want. I'm just gonna set this to a little bit lighter because I actually like the look of it. Maybe a little bit reddish as well. Something like that, beautiful. Right, so for the render settings, remember, uh, max samples, um, I'm gonna set this at like, it is hair, so we need a little bit more maybe. I'm just gonna set this at 1024. And the noise threshold, I'm gonna set this a little bit lower, 0 0.005 maybe. And I'm just gonna render this out and then I'll be back for some comments. Right, so the render is now done. Um, you can see that it turned out quite nicely. We have a lot of detail in this hair system that you could just reuse for any other object as well if you just apply those particle systems. Uh, remember that you can add these long hairs wherever you want. So if you want to add some more on the chin um, that I did with the previous image, for example, you can just go to the, the top head particle system, so the long hair one, um, and just add some weight paint at like that a beard area as well. And then you will have some longer hairs on the bottom. And um, so that's going to look nice. Um, so I think all together, um, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have some new insights on how to use particle systems and how to use multiple ones together to create some nice looking fur. Um, so that was it. I'm going to be uploading this before the Christmas holidays. So I wish you a Merry Christmas in advance. Have a Happy New Year and have a good time. All right. I'll see you in the next one.